Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the stealth challenge on Try Hack Me. I've already completed this one, so I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step walkthrough. So the first part of this is uploading a PowerShell script, and then it does some really basic checks to check if it's malicious. So how I avoided this is actually use my tool, the Power PowerShell Backdoor Generator. Um, I cloned this, then I went into the PowerShell directory. So we'll do Python 3 listen.py and then we want to listen on our um, VPN address so grab 10 copy that and I'm going to use dash r to randomize the name so that's done it's now listening so I'm going to do browse go to my PowerShell backdoor generator uh, directory then upload that PowerShell script do upload it's going to say seems legitimate Please await four to six seconds while the script is being analyzed. And then we're, there we go, so we, we have a shell. So I'm gonna show you guys what my backdoor script looks like so you guys can modify your favorite backdoors to avoid this AV. So all I'm doing is I'm utilizing variable name randomization and um, I was able to bypass it. If you're still not able to, you can remove comments, try moving comments from your code try changing the backdoor title or the name of the file and if that still doesn't work you can utilize function call obfuscation either through string concatenation which we're doing in this first example basically we're going to be creating the cmd let get process but we're going to be adding it in parts so we can say cmd equals part one plus part two and that creates the full string and then we can directly call it by doing an ampersand um, cmd and you can see that calls get processed where it lists all of our running processes. Another thing we can do is we can utilize base64. So we can say bytes equals and then system dot text dot encoding. And then we're going to be um, using Unicode dot get bytes. We're going to be converting it into bytes. And then we're going to use that same CMD as before. So get process. Now what we can do is we want to convert these bytes to base64 so we can say encoded command convert and say to base64 string and then we're going to pass the bytes that we created earlier. And then if we print out the encoded command and see so we have some nice base64 there. So let's go ahead and copy that let's do exit and now let's do PowerShell and then we can actually just say encoded command and then we can pass that base64 and you can see once again it calls git process so now for the user flag if we actually go back I think it's on the desktop yeah there's this encoded flag so we can use type to print out the contents of it and you can see it's some base64 string so if we actually copy this base64 decode uh, decode yep so it says you can get the flag by visiting the link and then it gives you this link to go to so I'm gonna copy that duplicate actually we shouldn't need this again so I'm gonna paste this here and it says hey seems like you uploaded an invalid file blue team has been alerted hint maybe try removing the log files so there's actually a log file in um, there's one in the documents CD task. Make this a little shorter so it's easier to read. So there's one here, so we can do del log.txt. But I think there's another one. If we go to C and then Zamp. Um, the XAMPP directory is where this uh, web paste is getting hosted right here. So we see the uploads. Dir. And then there's another log file right here, log.txt. And you can see this is our script that we uploaded. So you can do del log.txt. And that's going to go ahead and remove it. So let's go back here and refresh. And you can see there's the user flag right there. So evasion local user. So now we need to actually escalate our privileges, right? And we can do this by running privs check. Um, privs check is a really nice Windows PowerShell script that runs through a lot of different checks to see if we can escalate our privileges. 
like enumerating local groups, our current privileges, privileges of other directories, unquoted service paths, and actual kernel exploits. So you can download this just by clicking this privscheck.ps1 and then clicking the download button. And then I went ahead and I moved it to my HTTP serve directory in my downloads. So I'm running Python 3 and then I'm hosting a web, uh, a web HTTP server. And if we actually go to it, um, you can see it's actually hosting all these files that I have downloaded to this directory, including the priv script. So now let's go ahead and download it. So to download it, we can run the command IWR, and then we're gonna do URI. This is gonna be the URL we want to download, and then we want to say out priv.ps1. So now let's check to see if it's there. Okay, yeah, we got priv.ps1. So now to execute this, um, I had a lot of problems executing the script directly. So I really had to play around with the command and what I ended up with was powershell.exe and then I'm going to set the execution policy to bypass. Setting it to bypass just means um, we're not going to have any restrictions. It's not going to give us any warnings about executing the following script. And then we're going to do um, dash c so we can run a command dot space dot and then priv ps1 and then we want to do a semicolon uh, because this priv script basically just loads a function called invoke priv esc check so we're going to load it and then we're going to execute that actual function now it's going to take a bit here it's going to be running a lot of different checks and i'll see you guys when it's done all right it's done so let's kind of start at the top here and keep going down So the first thing it does is just enumerate very basic information. So you got the host name, the, the SID of the current user, the session ID, keep going down. So then it's just going to do basic reconnaissance on user groups. So there's nothing special here um, besides remote uh, desktop users. So we'll keep going down. So then it says privilege escalation user privileges. So these are our current privileges. And so we have SE change notifi notify privilege, which by bypasses traversal checking, not exploitable. Both of these are not exploitable. So credential access, it enumerates local variables to see if anything is saved in the, in the environmental table. So then we got non-default services. So now it's just enumerating what other services are on. We got the Amazon SSM agent, um, Apache, right? Running in that, um, running in that uh, XAMPP directory, AWS Lite. So I'm sure um, TryHackMe uses AWS hoster servers. Um, Google update services, nothing really too crazy. And then SSH, which is disabled. Keep going down. So now it's gonna check for uh, privilege escalation vulnerabilities. So it didn't find anything for the kernel. Um, service permissions, it didn't find anything. Service registry permissions, it didn't find anything. Let's keep going down. And now we get to something interesting, which is service binary permissions. So in the folder CZAMP, uh, it actually has the permission of write DAC, which means we are able to write to the access control. And the access control in the context of Windows is basically how resources are allocated to users. So it has an access control list of, oh, only administrator can access these files. Only evader can access these files. This system revolves around permissions and security principles, ensuring that only authenticated users um, or processes can access certain resources. So we don't have this permission, right? If we remember from earlier, we don't have this permission. So how we can actually exploit this is by uploading a shell to the XAMPP hgdocs directory. So if we actually go to, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. If we actually go to that XAMPP directory and then hgdocs, This is the, these are the files getting served back to the user. So if I actually open up Firefox, we're gonna be using the Powery shell. Uh, I'm sure I spelled that wrong. No, what's it called? Po, yeah, here it is. The Pony shell, sorry. So this is a very popular um, web shell. It actually gives you a really nice output. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and I already have this downloaded, shell.php. It's in that same directory before, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Let's see shell.php. I'm gonna add this to the end. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna say IWR 
dash URI, same thing as before, and then out shell dot PHP. And now I'm gonna run who am I again? Who am I slash priv? And we are going to go here and we are gonna go to it's on port 8080 and then shell dot PHP. Alright, so now we have we have another shell. Let's go ahead and make this a little smaller. And if I actually do, who am I? Slash priv. You can see we have different permissions now. We have the SE impersonate privilege, which just basically means we can impersonate. So to actually exploit this, we can use another tool. It's called EFS Potato. Go ahead and go here. And so this just basically exploits the SE um, impersonate privilege vulnerability. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna download this. I already have it downloaded and it's in my HGBT serve directory. So I'm gonna go back, let's open this up again. And then it's at efs.cs. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And now what we're gonna do is go back to our pony shell. And we are gonna go to our users folder. So users and then debater. Clear the screen real quick. Uh, dir, you can see, oh yeah, we didn't download it. So now we're going to do iwr dash out file or uri paste that uh, url one last time and then we're going to do out efs dot cs now whoops did i spell it wrong iw oh we're not in powershell so we want to do powershell um, dash c for command and then we want to i'm just going to copy this uh copy this shell opens cmd so now if we do ls or dir you can see that efs.cs is there. So if we actually go back to the instructions on this, you can see it says to run csc.exe. Now this won't work. It's not, this uh, binary isn't added, to, uh, isn't added to path. So what we can do is if we actually go under, you can see it's, it has some instructions here. If we go ahead and copy this directory. We can do CD, uh, Windows, Microsoft, Net, then Framework, and then we want to enter this last directory right here if we actually scroll up uh, you can see eventually there's that csc.exe so i'm going to go ahead and copy this and i'm going to do csc.exe and then um, you, we can't build this in our current directory or it's going to give us a permission issue so we want to say out um, C, um, C users evader and I'm just gonna say desktop and then efs.exe and then now we're gonna pass the source file so let's think it's C users evader uh, efs.exe let me double check uh, yeah so then finally we're gonna pass the no warn. So this is just gonna say, hey, ignore these warnings. Press enter. It's gonna take a second. Oh, whoops, oh, yeah, I messed that up. I said e exe instead of efs. So efs.cs, that's what I meant, sorry. And then we are gonna pass the no warn. It's gonna take a second. There we go, so it compiled. So now if we actually go to our desktop, and we can just run efs.exe and then we can pass the command we want to do so I'm going to do uh, who am I slash priv actually no we need to just do who am I I'm just going to do who am I yeah NT authority system so now we have all of these permissions and we're now system but now it's, you know, it'd be a lot of work to just run commands until we finally find the root flag. So instead, what we can do is we can add a local user and um, RDP is enabled on this machine. So what we can do is we can do efs.exe and then what we're gonna do is net user um, rooted password one, two, three, and then we're gonna do slash add. So that adds a user and now to actually give that user administrative privileges we can do 
efs.exe net local group administrators rooted slash add and that's going to add him to the administrator group so now what we can do is I have on Linux uh, the Remina client this is for RDPing and we can just do a new connection here and username is rooted password is password one two three explanation point and the server is this IP whoops Let's go ahead and connect. It's going to ask us if we accept the certificate. And there we go. You can see it's working and we're logging in. And since we're administrators, we can access all folders in this device. So I can go ahead and I'm just going to open up a random folder here. I guess, oh, here's file manager. So I'm going to open file manager now because we're administrator and we're going to go to this PC, uh, local C drive, users, administrator, let's say continue. It's going to check our privileges. And now if we go to desktop, the flag is right here. So THM admin access. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I thought this was a fun challenge. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.